Well, hey all and welcome back. So today I am very excited to bring you the Big Bag Toy Store exclusive Siege on Cybertron. And when I say exclusive, I mean exclusive in the United States because it looks like the rest of the world got it before we did. Uh, which is a shame, but it is what it is. If you wanted a Jinrai that is more like a Power Master Optimus Prime than the Power Master Optimus Prime Hasbro produced, or at least, you know, a better rendition of that, this was the way to get it because you could either spend $100 to $130 for the Takara version or been a little bit of patient, spend $100 on this version and gotten some pretty cool repaints in the mix. So let's go ahead and check out the box. On the top of the box, it shows you what you're getting. We have this, of course, piece of illustration on the front, the sticker, and then on the back, you see the different bots and some of their alt modes. And I say some because this guy's a triple changer. Now, it talks a little bit about the set. There were supposed to have been four box sets originally. However, at San Diego Comic-Con, we discovered that there's a good chance that we are only going to get these two and some of the other figures may be distributed through other means. Uh, we might find out at the upcoming Hasbro show, but we'll have to wait and see. But there's the box. It's not bad. It's in the same style as the previous set. Comes with a poster that shows the box art. And to show you comparison with the other poster that you got, um, I do prefer the illustration of the Chaos of Velocitron set a little bit better, but it's still not a bad illustration, especially with the nice Metal Hawk picture in front. So, on top of that, we got a little card and a single set of instructions. Actually, two sets of instructions uh, for the bots. So, if you bought this solely for the Jinrai, or as they're calling him, Magnus Prime, then you might have to sell your, your particular toy without instructions. Uh, unless you have one of the repaint sets that you're willing to part with. So anyway, let's get on to the toys and see if these are worthy of our collection. So let's start with the little guys first. We have the clone pounce here. And just like in the other set, we've got a single clone and we have a Titan Master. And this Titan Master, see if we can get a good focus on him, is pretty sharp looking. He's, he's die cast. Um, I think that this one is painted a little bit better than the Rodimus that we got. And then we open them up, and we have sort of this mask dude painted on here. And it's pretty cool. The only thing I don't, I don't like about these is the heads are very stiff on them. Uh, and you just you fear a little bit of breakage, but they seem to kind of loosen up over time if you're gentle with them. I would suggest probably moving back and forth first before trying to twist them. Uh, but even with the Rodimus, that one was a little stuck. But yeah, we have... Uh, a nice arrangement of different colors here, some painted detail, a little bit on the chest, and this really, really cool face. And the problem with this face is that it might not go with a whole lot of bodies. Uh, I played around with some of the ones I have, and one of the ones I'm going to show in a little bit, I think he might go best with, but this is a cool Titan Master. It's just that when you know about Thunderwing, you kind of feel like you should have a very large bot uh, for him to go with. So we'll go ahead and set him on the side here. And of course, these guys, especially with the die cast, a little bit harder to stand up than what we're used to. So we'll just let him take a rest. But like with the other set, we got a clone. And I have to say this, the clone is very cool. It looks like the same torso. However, the torso has a little bit of molded details here that are different. So it is not the identical torso. So it's nice to see that we have some similarities, but we don't have the exact same robot going across. Legs are different, arms are different, heads are different. So this is a new bot. It just shares a very similar transformation style and aesthetic. What we can see here, we have a very G1 looking bot here. Uh, I think they captured it quite nicely. The only complaint I would say about bot mode is I feel like the face detail might have been a little bit crisper in the molding. Uh, and I mean, maybe just all this mono or monotone plastic here sort of hides it, but I think something to done that, maybe the eyes a little bit sharper, something to make it stand out more. It makes it look a little bit more aged as a figure. However, it still looks pretty good. It captures the clone. Um, you do have a little bit better stability here because you have the heels back, but as is, I mean, you have pretty much the same thing. It's a fun little bot. And we'll go ahead and move this guy out of the way. Transformation is quite simple. Uh, fold the tail back. We've got legs here, spin them around, the heels pop out, so we have feet. Then we can fold this head forward, 
Of course, the arms fold in just like the other transformation. And this one, I would say, is a little bit more involved uh, than, the, than the other one that we have. And there you go. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. So it has a pretty cool look to it. Um, really, really captures the G1 essence. Now, the one gripe here is the arms don't really lock in well. So you kind of have to find a good position. But the problem is, is they just, they just look like arms hanging there. I mean, unless you look at it from just that view, they're not entirely great as far as hiding. But it still looks all right. It's still going to be fine on the shelf. But they don't lock in very well. We do have a poseable tail. The legs, uh, you can kind of mess around with the poses. You can sort of get one foot back. Can't really do forward because the knee only goes so far. So you, you can kind of mess around with posability, but you are limited. You can kind of balance them on three legs. It's just not super articulate. It does capture G1, though. It is like having a modernized G1 figure, just like the other one, which is why I like the other one. So if you're looking for a bot that captures the, G, the G1 clones uh, very closely visually uh, and also play factor, I do think this is going to scratch that itch for you. But if you're looking just for a cool little Legends figure um, that sort of fits the modern engineering quality, this is a little lacking just because... Uh, it, it's a little bit loose in the way some things work and a lack of posability. But the people probably going after this are probably the G1 fans. So this will suit you guys just fine. And like all the other figures, this one is set up. And that's why I want to bring out Thunderwing first. Um, because he can ride on his back. And without a, without a Titan Master there, you do have sort of this gaping open area that does look like it, it's missing something. Um... So you probably want to use this guy if you're going to keep him in this mode for being ridden all the time. Now, since the rest of these figures are repaints of others in the line, I'm not going to waste your guys' time with transformation because I know there's a lot of bots and we want to get through this. But I have to say this. If you do not have Trigger Happy, you're in luck because this is one of the best deluxe molds of the Titans Return line. And the reason for that is, not only because it is a cool-looking bot, cool-looking vehicle mode, which I, I say is reminiscent of some sort of Star Wars fighter. Uh, maybe maybe it does reference the, the G1 some. It's, it has such a cool design for the transformation that you definitely will appreciate this figure. Now, to show these, even though they, it is a repaint, there is enough done to this one to where you don't feel like you have the absolute same figure. Um, of course, we do have the, the different colored weapons, uh, some gold throughout here, red, a more bluish color versus the purple. Same sort of uh, decal painted on here, but of course the Autobot logo. And they both have the same function. You can open up the cockpit, and your Titan Master rides inside. And to show you guys these Titan Masters, you can see here how this one's actually quite plain. Though he does have a really nice face sculpt. Uh, nicely painted, great details on the eyes. And that was one of the things that I don't think the pictures really showed off of this guy. I mean, the pictures, I'm like, oh, he's kind of okay. I like his gun hands. That's really why I went after him. But yeah, I, I have to say that that really, really makes the figures this, this awesome head. And this guy also really lacking on the paint, especially when you compare to the other characters in the set. Um, they did do that, but let's look at this. This is possibly one of the best faces on a Titan Master so far. Uh, I'm not going to say it's the best, but man, it is a awesome face. Great coloring, great sculpt, very original looking, uh, where a lot of them, they're, they're sort of variations ago. We've got another mask face with a little bit of, you know, different angles here and there to sort of differentiate them. But this guy, he is very unique. So, if you do not have Trigger Happy, which you should, this is a great stand-in as far as having a set of that mold. And there is a couple variations of this mold that have come out. However, this, is the, this, this so far, I think, is the best version of it. Let's go ahead and get these guys in bot mode so we can pair them that way. So, here they are. Same exact robots. Same exact accessories. 
just different color scheme and different Titan Masters. And I think that is enough to really set them apart, especially in this chest area here where they've done all this sort of variation of the, the reds and the golds. I think that really helps it stand out. Now, they do both have the same gimmick. So if you take away the weapons here, you can actually fold the fist up and he has gun hands. And of course, you know, like I have on the other one, you can add the guns to the shoulders and you can just give them some sort of crazy super cannon mode. But yeah, this is definitely a cool figure. Lots of playability, lots of fun factor, uh, lots of configurations you can have with him. And it is, it is something definitely to be excited for if you're going to get this set. If you don't have this guy yet and you don't want to get him, this is definitely the version to have. Now, the only gripe, and it's a minor gripe, is the red cannons. I know it helps them stand out. I just sort of prefer my cannons to be more of a, a silver, gray, kind of a just a typical metal color. But, you know, it's fine. Red guns, we have lots of red guns and Transformers, so it's really not that big of a deal. And it does really help him stand apart. But when you've got these guys next to each other like this, it does not feel like you've got the same figure twice. They've done enough work to where it really stands out. But yeah, the articulation's good. It's all the same. Nothing in the feet. Because they, they the new style for Hasbro is just to, to cut slants in the feet, or, or sculpt slants in the feet, to where they can have a dynamic pose. There's really not a whole lot of configurations there. And you have a typical knee, swivel, waist, hip joint, shoulder joint, swivel. Then, of course, you have the hands fold away. The cannons come up. Head can rotate kind of look around. I mean, we're, we're not really expecting a whole lot out of that. Um, and I, I would say the one glaring issue uh, on my specific example is there's a little speck of paint on his windshield. And I might be able to kind of get that off, uh, though I don't want to be careful because I don't want to scrape it up. Uh, I might just live with that and say it is what it is. But yeah, as far as the details go, all this greatness they've put in this figure, this is definitely a must-have right here. And if you don't want the set, you just want this guy, I'm sure plenty of people probably bought the set just for Jinrai, so you will have this guy popping up on eBay. I'm sure of it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next guy. And here we have Tidal Wave, who is a repaint of Broadside. And one of the cool things about these is they have these little pegs all over them, so you can have the Titan Masters sort of walking around. They do act as a aircraft carrier slash base sort of vehicle which is pretty cool. Now, looking at these two, I would say as aircraft carriers go, I feel like this one is a little bit stronger. I think the grays, uh, as well as the, the contrast of the graphics, just looks a little bit more realistic as far as an aircraft carrier goes. However, they both work. With this purple that this one has on here, it sort of feels a little bit more futuristic. For some reason, it feels like it should fly versus being in the water. I know it's just a slight difference in color, but it screams that to me for whatever reason. They both do have a similar flaw in this mode, though. Neither one of them really buttons down very well. You can see these panels here kind of pop up, and especially so on the new figure. And this, this is how it comes packed, which is why we're starting this mode. And you can see here, it's just, it's a little bit, it's not very flush. Things don't really snap together as well as I would like. And of course, that is a flaw from the original one, but this one seems a little bit more exaggerated in this mode. Now, the other thing... Neither of them had a great sticker. This runway, you can see on here, it has to go over these bumps, and it just, it doesn't look very finished in that, re in that respect. Well, this one here actually has sort of a little tear, uh, and that's unfortunate, because this bot is more suited to this mode, and I would actually probably ignore the jet mode altogether for him. But in this line, he is a triple changer. But like I said, the sticker is not great. I think Repro Labels, or what, what Toy Hacks, I think they're calling themselves now, uh, they'll probably have something to replace this to improve it. It's not horrible, but it, it is not perfect. And I feel that with each transformation, you're probably going to degrade those stickers a little bit further more each time. It, it's the sort of same problem we ran across with the Laser Prime. They just weren't the best kind of sticker they could have used. And that's a shame, because it is a pretty solid figure, and this is a pretty solid mode. Now, since it's a repaint, we're not going to bother transformation. We are going to go ahead and jump in the plane mode, though, so you can see those. But before we do, you can also see that it does come with the exact same accessories. Uh, it is just these little jets that can go on the aircraft carrier, 
and they have the same size hole as the feet of the Titan Masters, so let me place all over there. I think that's a really cool addition, and I'm glad they included it with this guy as well. Sure, it would be nice to have some painted detail on here, but this, you know, is really in the $25 price range, and we're already getting a lot of figure for the money. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump in plane mode, and we'll see how these guys look next to each other. And now onto their jet mode, and this is probably the worst thing of the whole set, and it can't be helped because that's how Hasbro had made this triple changer. It's just a strange jet mode. It's something you might think at best as some sort of space mode, but yeah, it's just not great. Um, aircraft carrier is pretty good. Jet is just not great. Now, there is some fan mods you can do where if you take these fins off, flip them around, you can flatten the legs, maybe put something in between to kind of peg them together, and it does look more like a jet. I mean, that's really as good as it's going to get. But with as it is out of the box with what Hasbro gave us, it's not great. And so to, when you take this off, you can really see how strange it looks. But putting it there does give it sort of a space mode. But you also block the cockpit. So you can put a Titan Master in the cockpit, snap shut. You can put the weapon up here and have one right on the top as gunner. And I mean, it's okay. It is a triple changer. Um, I do think they could have done a little bit more with it and made it better. But as far as the details go, they are uh, identical bodies. They have uh, different decals, different translucent plastic. We have blue instead of orange, or orange instead of blue, rather. And then we have uh, just different grays, uh, as well as the purple instead of red. They are pretty close as far as color palette, as way things are laid out. But they've done enough variety where they do stand apart. I think the purple on the Jet of Tidal Wave does help him resemble Decepticon. I, I think that is a very nice cue they used on him. Just because, for me, I'm very familiar with seeing Decepticon Jets as purple from the ones I've collected over the years. So anyway, enough about this mode. Like I said, I'm not entirely keen on it. I probably will never use this mode again. But we have it. With a little bit of with adjustments, you can make it something decent. Uh, however... Let's go ahead and jump into robot mode and see where this guy really shines the most. And here we have him in the robot mode. And before I put his head in there, I just want to give you guys a closer look here at the actual head design. And it's pretty cool. He's kind of got this mustache going on, uh, like, a, like he's an angry Cybertronian biker dude or something. Uh, I do think it's a pretty neat face. Very unique compared to a lot of the ones we've gotten. And uh, it definitely helps him stand out from the other figure. So, go ahead and snap him in. Got him next to Broadside right here. And this is one of those ones where I feel it's easier to plug him in if you turn the head the other way around. There we go. And he's got the same gimmick. You push the button, and the little pylons pop up beside his head. And then we have both of them in their respective robot modes. And they are the same figure. I mean... They do look a little bit different. I think the head really kind of sets it off. And one thing you can do here is you can actually maybe throw these up on him. And that might give him a little bit more unique of a look if you want to display both these guys on the same shelf. They both have the same weapon. I am not a fan of a lot of these Titan Master weapons because of the hollowness for the seat. I know it's a gimmick for playability, but I've never been really keen on it. But they do have the same weapon. Everything else is the same, just of course different molding. Uh, and where we have some translucent bits on here, we've got more of the opaque pieces over here. Now also, quick note, if you were to do the fan mode uh, alteration, these fins would work a little bit differently on the shins, but it wouldn't look that much different. So it's something to consider if you want to actually use a jet mode for these guys. Now, one thing to notice, he does have a few of the stickers on here, and I really do like the ones on the forearms. I think that's a nice way of breaking up the detail, adding a little bit more visually to the character. Now, of course, this one sticker here is a little crooked on mine, but he's still pretty sharp as is. My only gripe, I think, about the face is it's a little dark. I, I think if they had made a little bit more accents in there where there's a little bit more contrast, uh, even with the dark purple the details would pop up more, but you really have to get close to it to really see the details. The mouth kind of looks uh, mush mouth in a way. But uh, they have the same articulation. Set him aside. They both have the wings that kind of move. Hip articulation, rotation of the hip, knee, ankles move. Of course, we don't have any ankle tilt, which does make this guy a little less stable than you might like. Shoulders come out, rotation of the elbow, elbow, no wrist articulation, which a figure this size really does need. 
we have two types of articulation on the head. One where the entire section moves, and if you, re if you take the pylons down, you have the Titan Master rotation there as well. Shoulders rotate. Overall, no waist or, uh, articulation. Overall, lots of character. Good enough posability. And unique on its own. Uh, and here we have him in the robot mode. And before I put his head in there, I just want to give you guys a closer look here at the actual head design. And it's pretty cool. He's kind of got this mustache going on, uh, like, a, like he's an angry Cybertronian biker dude or something. Uh, I do think it's a pretty neat face. Very unique compared to a lot of the ones we've gotten. And uh, it definitely helps him stand out from the other figure. So go ahead and snap him in. Got him next to Broadside right here. And this is one of those ones where I feel it's easier to plug him in if you turn the head the other way around. There we go. And he's got the same gimmick. You push the button, and the little pylons pop up beside his head. And then we have both of them in their respective robot modes. And they are the same figure. I mean, they do look a little bit different. I think the head really kind of sets it off. And one thing you can do here is you can actually maybe throw these up on him. And that might give him a little bit more unique of a look if you want to display both these guys on the same shelf. They both have the same weapon. I am not a fan of a lot of these Titan Master weapons because of the hollowness for the seat. I know it's a gimmick for playability, but I've never been really keen on it. But they do have the same weapon. Everything else is the same, just of course different molding. Uh, and where we have some translucent bits on here, we've got more of the opaque pieces over here. Now also, quick note, if you were to do the fan mode uh, alteration, these fins would work a little bit differently on the shins, but it wouldn't look that much different. So it's something to consider if you want to actually use a jet mode for these guys. Now, one thing to notice, he does have a few of the stickers on here, and I really do like the ones on the forearms. I think that's a nice way of breaking up the detail and, and, and adding up, adding a little bit more, um, adding a little bit more visually to the character. Now, of course, this one sticker here is a little crooked on mine, but he's still pretty sharp as is. My only gripe, I think, about the face is it's a little dark. I, I think if they had made a little bit more accents in there where there's a little bit more contrast, uh, even with the dark purple, the details would pop up more. But you really have to get close to it to really see the details. The mouth kind of looks uh, mush mouth in a way. But uh, they have the same articulation. Set him aside. They both have the wings that kind of move. Hip articulation, rotation at the hip, knee, ankles move. Of course, we don't have any ankle tilt, which does make this guy a little less stable than you might like. Shoulders come out, rotation to the elbow, elbow, no wrist articulation, which a figure this size really does need. We have two types of articulation on the head, one where the entire section moves, and if you, re if you take the pylons down, you have the Titan Master rotation there as well. Shoulders rotate. Overall, no waist or, uh, articulation. Overall, lots of character. Good enough posability and unique on its own uh, character. Now, now, I know they've sort of gone with this Takara theme as far as this box set goes. I do wish we got this guy in these colors that we got here in the U.S. I like the green a little bit better. I think it's interesting. I think with the, the other lighter colors, some of the details might pop a little bit better. But for those who are a fan of the Takara version, this one might suit you uh, just fine. It does make me wonder if we'll get a release down the road where we maybe get these green colors. I don't expect it because I think they're wanting down this line a bit, but it would be cool to see that in the future. Now, one note about my uh, original Tidal Wave figure is I did modify the shoulders. That's why those uh, he has those arms pointing up like that. And I think when you, if you do modify yours that way, having these up here do suit the character. He is his own unique form for this line. It's a pretty decent figure. If you don't have broadside, it is a good mold. It is now a show former. We were afraid that it was actually going to be a harder figure to find, but they are everywhere now in mass supply. But if you do not have that mold yet, this is a definite figure for you. The face is cool. The colors are cool. The aircraft mode is pretty decent. The jet mode has potential if you do a little bit of tweaking to it. But overall, as a figure, it's actually pretty solid. So let's go ahead and move on to the main event. And here we have them. We have what most of us bought this set for, and that is the Power Master Optimus Prime, or as they're calling him, Magnus Prime. 
which is really just a slight adjustment to the Takara's Super Generi. Now, you might notice straight away that there are some differences between this one and the US version we have. There's a different cab. There's different colors. The plastic's different. The cab, the reds and grays are different. The guns up here are different. The wheels are painted. Uh, overall, it is a, an immediate improvement, I would say. The details are nice and sharp. I think they did a really nice job with the painting uh, and application. You can see them back here. If you've seen the Power Master version, there's no wonky feet poking out. And you can also see the nice cab here. And I really like the design that they did for the cab. Um, now, as far as rolling goes, it will roll. And you know what? Mine actually has some paint splotches on the wheels. I'm gonna have to come back with some acetone or something like that and clean it up. So on that side, they got paint on the wheels. Um, so there, looks like, yeah, looks like just there. So I'm gonna have to clean it up. That's a little unfortunate. So there's that. If you compare this to the LG35 to car version, the Autobot emblem is bigger. There's some red detail painted here. Uh, windows are a different color. For the most part though, we're pretty much getting that toy. There's a few different paint alterations uh, and a little bit with the graphics, but this is the way to get it. So like I said before, you could, if you're in a hurry, you could probably spend anywhere from 100 to 100 and, well, I think around $30 is where I saw it going, uh, and gotten it sooner, or wait a little bit and get it this way. Also, so this is making an equivalent of about 50 bucks, which is what we would have paid uh, MSRP of the Hasbro release of the Power Master Optimus Prime. So now that we got him like this, I want to mention a few things. First, let's go ahead and compare them to the original. And this is actually not the original, this is the commemorative edition. So you'll notice the gray uh, is a little bit different than the uh, original Power Master Optimus Prime. But, of course, we have six wheels instead of four. And let's see if I can get this in here a little bit better. But it does capture the look. I think it does a pretty good job. The original trailer and truck actually were a little bit weird looking. Uh, I mean, even in the 80s when we had the original G1 Optimus Prime and we jumped to the Power Master, the Power Master was a little strange looking comparatively, but it was still a pretty cool toy. The fun factor is really what made it. And what started it all, we'll compare it to the Ultra Magnus. Now the Ultra Magnus that we have here was the basis of the Hasbro Power Master Optimus Prime. The transformation, there's a few components that are shared, especially with the legs, uh, but for the most part, the trailer situation sort of has a lot more going on. Um, and on the back here, this definitely points out what I hated, even about this figure, the feet. The feet stick out down here. They're just not good looking um, in any mode. But as far as vehicle goes, I think they did an okay job on the Ultra Magnus. Transformation was fun enough on it. The robot mode looked good enough. Some interesting gimmicks. Even though we didn't have a transforming cab or painted wheels, and they had that new uh, Minimus sort of gimmick they added on there. Now, while I do appreciate the transformation of the Ultra Magnus version, I'm not as happy with it on the Power Master Optimus Prime version. And part of that being these top panels up here. The sides are fairly clever, they work out pretty well, but these top panels that are up here are a pain. It's, it's a little bit difficult to get this whole thing pegged uh, to hold tight together, and then you sort of have to support it from within as you assemble the top. Or you're going to have a lot of clapping. Same with these guns. You're actually going to want to install these guns before finishing the transformation, just because pushing it will separate things, like you can see here. Uh, it's just a minor nitpick, but it does take away from the fun factor while transforming. Speaking of transforming, let's go ahead and get these guys in the robot modes and really see what this is all about. And here we have Power Master Optimus Prime, or Magnus Prime as he's called on the box. And he is actually pretty awesome. Now, I will say this, transforming him from a truck to a robot mode is a lot more enjoyable than the other way around. Things click better, uh, they come apart easier. You don't have to worry about trying to get those panels to lay just right. Uh, the only only flaw I think I run across is this one peg on this leg does not clip as well as I'd like. And the heels, they have a little screw in them, 
uh, and you can see back here and I kind of tighten that a little bit but you don't want to go too hard because you don't want to stress anything but he's not the most stable he is a lot more poseable because he has ankle articulation now but because of these big blocky legs and these sort of heavy ratchets in the hips he's kind of hard to get in good stable poses I think someone needs to come along make a new ratchet set for the hips that have maybe more gears and I think that will help it now let's go ahead and do a couple things uh, before we really dive into what I feel about this character or this figure and firstly let's go ahead and put him next to the Ultra Magnus that sort of started this whole mold and Ultra Magnus looks pretty good with him um, he's a little bit shorter even though his pylons on his shoulders are a bit higher uh, they do go well together the feet on the Ultra Magnus are terrible I do have the upgrade kit for the other feet but I, I put these back on uh, the way they're supposed to be so you can sort of see what Optimus Prime had going on the Hasbro release and it is these feet with very minimal articulation uh, they are a little bit more stable though. thing that really could have saved these feet is had they designed more of a ball system in there and had something on the feet that maybe transformed to cover up this gap. You know, that's, that's a review for another figure, but they did improve the look of this Optimus Prime with this, these new feet. Now, uh, also on the, on the note of stability, these toes actually don't do a whole lot. They're really just there to cover up the gaps and resemble the old Power Master look. Uh, the rest of the foot is really what does all the work. So what we want to do now is put him next to the actual Power Master. And you guys can get an idea of the look. The really captured the essence of him, I think, for the most part. You have the weapons in the same places. Uh, he's still somewhat chunky, even though a little bit more poseable. You've got the interesting long toes. Same here. Now, the biggest design flaw, I think, visually about this that really could have been improved now even even with these elbows they have the flaps in the arm still even like the Hasbro one they did improve it however my biggest gripe is the wheels on the legs the power mask always had the wheels go like this and I think by having them the way they are in Ultra Magnus you create this strange gap almost like a bell bottom had this section here had opened up and maybe rotated I think it would have improved that section there. I think visually, that's probably the biggest gripe I have about this guy. Now, as far as everything else goes, he's pretty cool. Now, even with this, this Titan Master gimmick, let's go ahead and get the head off here. And something I've even considered, I, I have considered, something I've considered, I have an extra Ultra Magnus head. I've actually considered putting this on Ultra Magnus when I upgrade the head of this uh, and making him a Titan Master. But I'm probably going to leave him as is. Now, one of the things I want to show you guys real quick, we have the Laser Optimus, and I just want to show you that this is actually a different head sculpt. Uh, the vent is a little different size. The fins on his head are a little bit different size. The mouth guard is a different shape. The eyes are larger. So it's not the exact same head, in case you were wondering. And as far as the Titan Master goes, they did do a little bit of face painting on there. It's not bad looking. Um, the Takara version is a little bit nicer because it looks like high Q, uh, but I'm not too worried about that because I plan on upgrading to the Perfect Effect set uh, in the very near future. So we snap this back on here, though it's not entirely necessary because he does have the helmet. Um, the neck is a little bit loose on this Titan Master, so it's a little bit hard to put in. And this face mask. Uh, is a lot more uh, appealing in person than it is in photos. Really the only flaw about it is that you sort of have this hall eyes. And I found if you use the Titan Master from Broadside, it actually makes them red like the original uh, Power Master and does look a little bit better. So anyway, let's talk about a little bit of the differences. Uh, the biggest difference that really makes us stand aside from the Takar version is this is blue instead of white. And as you can see on the original figure, the crotch area was white as well. Uh, not, not a huge deal. Hasbro had previewed that this was actually going to be painted a very high, uh, like premium silver uh, that they had used on other figures, but we did not get that. Though I am happy that we got a figure that is closer to the Takara version, just because I was pretty happy with how that turned out, and there's less room for things getting scratched off. Now, and you can also see on his weapons here, 
We've got the new guns, which have the Titan Master gimmick they'll connect. And this is the ones that he got stuck with with the Power Master version, which were really just Ultra Magnus's guns. He's got these nice cannons up here. And of course, they've got a spot for the Titan Master set. He has the same engineering as Ultra Magnus, where this can go up and allow for arm articulation. You can see here, even though he looks pretty much the same red all the way through, there is some slight variation in the red of, on, say, the elbows versus the shoulders and the arms and the cap everything. And as you can see, these reds are a little bit different. Uh, the gray, I think, is a slight different on the thighs, though I don't think any of these colors are really different enough to warrant one over the other. They have slight differences. However, if you just want a new Power Master Prime, this is, this is pretty good. Now, we have the arm rotation, moves up, articulation there. These nice new hands. Now, I really, really like these new hands. Um, great shape, nice color. They, they're really well thought out. Same super strong ratchet in the hip, like Ultra Magnus. Swivel, knee articulation. Pretty good considering he's got these big blocks for legs. Uh, no waist. And he does have ankle articulation, though, like I said, it's a little unstable. So you really have to find the sweet spot for it. And, I, and part of that is, when you start posing it, is to put the legs together, put everything flat, and just sort of work its way out till you find the best balance of everything as far as the pose you want and all that. And I think that really helps. Quick look from behind. You can see his super big calf tattoos, which are kind of cool. Uh, the only glaring thing, other than these panels sticking up, which don't even bother me that much, is this open area here. But like I said, when I upgrade that, that won't be an issue. We'll have a video coming up in the near future where I get those new perfect effect parts. Now, other than that, my, my final feel about this, uh, the thing I really want to point out, I went and bought another Power Master Optimus Prime because even though it's sort of a wonky figure and there's not a whole lot of posability to it, it had some things I really liked about it. And one of them being one of the most satisfying clicks of any transformer, and that is when you put the cab in. And unfortunately, we don't really get this simple kind of fun transformation. I, I consider this a fidget transformation on the right, something that you can kind of just keep fiddling with, on off, move things around. It was fun in that way. There is a bit more work on the new figure, as to be expected, but it's a little bit more fiddly than I think we would like, especially when we go into vehicle mode. So there, there's that concern. Um, there's a little bit of stability problems. There's a little bit of refinement issues as far as assembling things where pegs hold, uh, mostly in vehicle mode, but like you can see on this one leg here, on this one leg. And then of course there's the head. While it does support the Titan Master gimmick, it's a gimmick I don't think has to be on every figure. And that's why I'm looking forward to the Perfect Effect set to replace that. So anyway, it's not really a bittersweet experience. There are a couple flaws in here. I do think this is a great modern interpretation of Power Master Optimus Prime that we've been longing for for so long. While Hasbro ignored us as far as giving us a transforming cab, other companies I think are going to come to our aid, especially Perfect Effect, and resolve that. So let us know in the comments below if you think this guy is going to be your Power Master Optimus Prime or if you're going to have to wait on another company to come up with something better. Like always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.